So let's work a concrete example of using the um, gradient to optimize a function when we're subject to some constraint. So here our function, um, depending on location, we just take our x times y and that's the output of the function. So we want to make x times y as big as possible, but the deal is we have to always satisfy this constraint. x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now you recognize that as the equation of an ellipse, so let me graph that ellipse. Here's our ellipse. Um, you see that it's from negative 2 to 2 in the x-axis and from negative 3 to 3 in the y-axis, just like you'd expect from your experience with ellipses. Now, so we have to stay on this pink line, and we need to make um, x times y as big as possible. Now, we could think about maybe some level sets for this function. If x times y is equal to 0, that could happen, um, you know, f of x, y equals equal to 0, that would be x times y is equal to 0, that would happen either all along the x-axis, right? Because if the y value is 0, then x times y is 0, and if the y value is 0 on the x-axis, or anywhere on the y-axis as well. So here's the 0 level set. So let's say we're on the curve, oh, say here. Right? Now, the gradient of f is going to point in this direction. Right? So here's the level set where f equals 0, we're there. And the gradient is pointing that way because um, if you look at this level set, the gradient is perpendicular to the level sets. If I were to increase the y value, then x is positive, right? So we would get an increase in f. Or if you're here, the gradient is pointing that way. Or if you're here, the gradient is pointing that way because the x value is already negative. So you need to decrease the y value. So you have a negative x and a negative y, then you'll get a positive value for f. Let's see, the gradient is also going this way here. So if you were here, then to increase f, you need to go that way. And that's perfect, because the gradient of g is this way. And so you can, you can stay on the level set going perpendicular to the gradient of g, right? And still be moving in the direction of increasing f. So you would move along here, right, as you got to a higher value. Or if you were here, the gradient of g is out this way. Oh, when I say g, I'm thinking we're talking about this function g of xy equal x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9, right? So we're, our constraint is really a level set of that function. It's the level set where g of xy is equal to 1. So since this constraint is a level set, the gradient of the level set has got to be perpendicular to the level set. Okay, so say you're at this point then, um, you have to, to, in order to stay on the curve, you can't, you have to move uh, perpendicularly to the gradient, right, so that you don't leave that curve. Um, and in order to increase f, you have to go this way, which happens to be also perpendicular to the gradient of, of g. So the gradient of f is perpendicular to the gradient of g. This is perfect. You'll just end up, you can just keep moving this way and increasing your value of f. Or let's say you're here, right? The gradient of g is this way, and the gradient of f is that way. As long as you can move at least partially in the direction of gradient of f, then the directional derivative is positive, and so you'll be increasing the value of f as you travel that way. Same deal here, the gradient g is down, the gradient of f is that way, so you can move in the direction of the gradient of f and, and still be moving um, perpendicular to gradient of g, so that would say you can, you can increase f and still stay on the level set. So let's put on another level set. This, this is the level set where f of xy equals 1. Okay, so on this level set still Let's say you get to this point. Now you've, you've, you've increased your value of f from 0 up to 1. Now the gradient of f is pointing this way. The gradient of g is pointing that way. And so you can still move at least partially in the direction of gradient of f while moving perpendicularly to gradient of, gradient of g. You need to move perpendicularly to the gradient of g to stay on the level set so you keep satisfying your constraint. You need to move at least partially in the direction of gradient of f to be able to increase the value of f. So you'd move along here. Let me put on the next level set. So I put on the level set f of xy equals 2. So I guess I could have chosen like 1.1 or any other value, but this is just a, a higher level set. So we, you can see that we would keep moving along here to this level set. Now the gradient of f is this way. The gradient of g is out that way. You can still at least partially move in the direction of gradient f while moving perpendicular to gradient g, so you can still get increase. Or let's say you're back here, right? You can see the gradient of g would be perpendicular to that level set. The gradient of f would be perpendicular to this level set. 
So it's possible to move perpendicular to gradient g. In other words, it's possible to stay on the level set while still moving at least partially in the direction of gradient of f. If you can move in the direction of gradient of f, you're going to get increase in f. So you can move along here. Watch what happens, though, when we get to the level set where f is equal to 3. When that happens, the gradient uh, at this point here, right, we get to that level set where um, this is the level set where f of x, y equals 3. At that point, the gradient of f and the gradient of g, although they might have different values, they are aligned. So the gradient of f and the gradient of g are both pointing in the same direction. In other words, the gradient of g, you could say, must be some scalar multiple, or the gradient of f must be some scalar multiple of the gradient of g because they're both aligned. At that point where they're aligned, then if you, move, if you stay on the level set, you're going to have to be moving perpendicularly to gradient f. But since those are aligned, you're also going to have to move perpendicularly to gradient or let's see, to stay on the level set, you've got to move perpendicular to gradient g. But then um, if you're moving perpendicular, perpendicular to gradient g, since that's aligned with gradient f, you're also moving perpendicular to the gradient of f, which means you can't get any increase. So you reach your maximum value when the two gradients are aligned. It's impossible to continue to stay on the level set, move perpendicular to, to gradient g, and move in, in the direction of gradient f. When the two are aligned, you can't, you can't do um, you can't do both, so you can't get any more increase. Or um, also, on the other end, you can't get any more decrease in that case. So really, the condition for getting at a, to be at a maximum is that the gradient of f has to be a scalar multiple of the gradient of g.